Are you just now hearing about Airtable? If so, you are going to have your mind blown by all of the capabilities that this software is going to unlock for you. It is really unlike anything we have ever seen before and gives you so much building power. And the best part is you don't have to know how to write a single line of code. Well, this video is dedicated specifically to Airtable users in 2023. We're going to be breaking down all of the basics of Airtable so that you can get up and running more quickly with the software. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I own Gap Consulting. And over the last five years, we've been helping people get organized and automated with no code tools. And as you might guess, Airtable is at the front of those tools. Now in this video, we're gonna be breaking down the big key elements of Airtable. But before we get into it, I'd like to invite you to join me for my Airtable crash course. This crash course will be delivered to your inbox if you choose to sign up one email a day for about a week. And we're gonna be breaking down all the key features of Airtable in greater detail than we do in this video. So if after you've watched this video or heck even now, you decide, hey, I want more, I want a more advanced introduction to this, grab that crash course, sign up for free at garethpronovost.com slash Airtable dash crash dash course. But without further ado, let's hop on into the heart of the video and we are starting right from the beginning inside of Airtable. Now, I use Airtable as a consultant, so I have literally hundreds of databases here, but if you're a new user, you will not have nearly as many. The first place to recognize is that we have on our home screen here a couple of options. We have what is called workspaces in the upper left corner, and if we drill into workspaces, what we're going to find is all of the different folders that we use that are going to store our different databases. So let me rewind and just say that Airtable is a database tool and it allows us to build a database in the cloud. It looks and feels like a spreadsheet, so it's not intimidating, but it's capable of so much more than just using Excel or numbers in order to get the job done. And the reason for this, as you'll see through this video, is that we can actually link data across different tables so that our information is talking and this allows us to draw way deeper insights. But the other really massive and incredible feature is that because this is a cloud-based tool, we can also build incredible automation so that we are no longer required to manually push data around. Instead, we can build processes so that all of the data moves automatically based on certain conditions that we establish. So let's go ahead and get started over here and we're gonna select a workspace. So again, a workspace is simply a folder for databases. So I will choose my preferred workspace and you'll notice that I've also favorited it or start it. So this is my Gap Consulting workspace and in here, I'm gonna see all the different databases that I have access to inside of this particular place. Now, I wanna point out that you can have an unlimited number of databases, but each database will be subject to a limitation of records. So you can only add so much data to each one. And that limit is gonna be based on your plan for the workspace. So if you're in a free plan, that limit is somewhere around 1500 records. So you can get a lot done for free, but as you upgrade to a paid plan, you're going to get even more functionality, even more depth available inside of your workspace. So now let's go in and start looking at a database inside of our solution but I don't wanna access one of our pre-existing databases. I have two choices. I can either come down into the bottom left corner and start looking at templates. And Airtable's put together a number of different templates to help you ease into the software. But what I really love is how easy it is for you to build your own. And so I strongly recommend creating a base and just starting from scratch. When you make the selection, it'll ask you, where do you wanna put this base? And we'll say, let's drop it right in here into our Gap Consulting workspace. Now immediately what you'll see is that Airtable's popped up with an untitled base. And so we'll give it a name. I'll call this my 2023 example. And so this now represents our new database. And inside of our database, we are going to have these tabs up at the top. Each tab is a table. And a table represents a set of data inside of Airtable. So I might have things like contacts. I might have things like items. I might have things like orders. And so you get the idea. Each one of these different tables now has its own data 
but the data doesn't live in a vacuum, I'll be able to connect all of this information. So let's actually hide these fields. By default, when we add a new table, it has these three fields, notes, assignee, and status, which aren't relevant for me here, so I'm gonna hide them from our view. So what's an order look like? Somebody submits an order, it has a number. So this is order number one. And what comes after that? Well, the order was ordered on behalf of someone who is a client. So I could just type in a client name, but in fact, this is where I want to actually link to another set of data in my database. So really quickly, let's flip over to my contacts. So what does a contact look like? Again, I'm gonna hide those three fields, but a contact will have a first name, will have a last name, and an email address. I'm sure that there are more pieces of information that we might collect on our contacts, but I'll keep it this simple for our example. So if I were a contact in this database, I would appear like this. I would have all of this information inside of that particular record, but what you'll notice is missing is the name on the far left. I've done this intentionally because we call this the primary field. The primary field inside of every table should have two different things that make it unique. Number one, that primary field needs to identify what this record is. So in the case of a contact, it's very common that we would use the full name here. We would take the first and the last name, smush them together, and now we know who that contact is. Now the other thing we really like to do inside of our primary field, the second takeaway here is that we want it to be as unique as possible. So this doesn't have to be exact. I'm sure that over time you're gonna have multiple John Smiths inside of your database, but uh, for us, we wanna make it mostly unique. We're gonna see that everywhere else throughout our database when we link to it. So let's take a look and add this. We'll call this now the full name, and I don't wanna ever have redundant data. If I already know somebody's name, I don't wanna have to type it again and again and again. So that's where formula is gonna come into play. I can write a quick concatenate formula that is going to allow me to string together two other pieces of data in this case, I'm stringing together the first name with a space and then the last name, and I'm cutting that formula off with my closed parenthesis, and I'm gonna save it up. Right now, it's going to take all that information and just take these two fields, smush it together with a space in the middle, and come up with the full name. So that is formula writing 101. Anywhere that we have redundant data and we don't wanna to have to enter it or key it in again, use a formula to do the thinking for us. So now, let's flip back to our orders. As I was mentioning, when we put in an order, somebody is making that order. So we're gonna link our orders now to our contacts and we can add a linked relationship, linking to another record inside of our Airtable database. And I'm going to link to the contacts table here. And now I'm asked, how many times can you link? So will an order be placed on behalf of multiple people? No, I don't wanna select multiple contacts for one order. So I toggle this off, create the field. And now what I can do is actually link up to somebody inside of my contacts table. Now I'm not done for an order because there's more information an order needs. Namely, it needs to know what they bought. So what's the item? Well, I can again link to my other tables, link to our items and say that every time an order comes in, just to keep it simple, they can only buy one thing at a time. And so we'll go ahead and create that field. Let's flip over to items really quickly. Again, I'm going to start hiding some fields, but you'll notice one field here that we didn't have earlier, and it's our link to orders. Because as I built my link from orders to items, well then, the reciprocal of that link also came into existence. So it's impossible to link two tables and only have one side of the link. You need both pieces talking together so that you are able to connect that data. So here I am, let's add three different items. We sell pencils, we sell erasers, and we sell rulers. I'm really into stationary, I don't know why. So here we go, I've got my different items inside of my database now. I could track things like the cost of them. And I have no idea what these items cost, so I'll make up some stuff. Let's say a pencil is five cents, an eraser is 10 cents, and a ruler is 50 cents. Now, what is the price that I sell it for? I can track this information as well. You'll notice every time that I'm adding a new field, I'm also choosing the field type that relates to the data that I'm gonna bring in here. So I'm saying currency because I'm talking about prices. In the case where I'm dealing with text, I'm bringing in a text field. In the case where I'm bringing in numbers, I'll use number fields, etc. 
So let's say that we sell a pencil for 50 cents, we sell an eraser for a dollar, and we sell rulers for 250. Now I have my cost and my price, but I haven't had any orders placed just yet. Let's flip back to orders and keep filling out this order number one. So if you recall, Gareth, place an order. I've linked to my contact. What was the item that he ordered? Well, let's say he ordered pencils. How many did he order? Let's add a quantity field. This will be a number field, of course, and we'll make it only to the integer. Whole numbers only, we can't order a partial pencil. So let's say that Gareth ordered 150 pencils in our example. So here I am, I now have all the information I need for my order. But you might say, I don't really have everything. I wanna know how much did that order cost? What was my profitability on that order? This is all stuff that we can use formulas to calculate for us. I can now drill in and look at different layers of information because they live elsewhere in my database. For example, maybe I wanna know Gareth's email. So what's the customer email? Well, that customer email information lives in the contacts table. So I can use a lookup field here and I look at the linked relationship that I have established with my contacts. And inside of that, I'm able to choose all of the fields that live in my contacts table and bring them into this table. So I can access that email field and there it is. That's Gareth's email. What about the price? Well, I can bring in the price and the cost of these items using, again, a lookup field. Although this time I'm gonna look at the item that I've selected and I will choose the price here, bring that in. And in the name of expediency, I will just copy this. I'll hold down Alt and click and drag another copy, but now I'll go back in and rewire this one to be cost. I'm looking at the item and I wanna look at the cost and I'll save it up. So check that out. I have all the relevant information now that exists for this order and I can calculate from here what I need to know. What's the total of the order? Well, that's some simple arithmetic. I'll use a formula here and I will go and say, well, I need that price. Here's my price field multiplied by my quantity. There's my quantity field and there it is, 75. Let's make sure that we go into formatting and output that as currency and save it up. So we can see that we have a $75 order. We wanna know the cost total. Again, I'm just gonna copy this, cost total, and I will rewire it. I don't care about the price, I care about the cost. Let's bring in that cost times the quantity. So there it is. If I wanna know my profitability, easy enough. Another formula here. Let's go ahead and say order total minus cost total. Drop it in, make sure it's output as a currency. Save that field, and there it is. That's a pretty good profit margin. Of course, we can also make sure that we're looking at percentages by tweaking that formula ever so slightly, but I think you get the idea. The point behind Airtable is to eliminate redundant data entry. But this is just the beginning because Airtable is capable of so much more. Not only can we store all of our information here, but we can also automate the workflow. This is something that I'll teach more about in my crash course, so please do check that out if you haven't already. But the automations panel here allows us to build processes that bring in information or adjust it automatically based on certain conditions. Then, as an additional layer, we can even go into interfaces. And with interfaces, we can do a drag and drop interface that allows our team to collaborate and they don't have to stare at a database because let's face it, do we all love spreadsheets? Not everybody does. And so instead we can have a beautiful interface and bring in only the relevant information that different team members need in order to do their job. There is a lot of possibility here inside of Airtable, so I do encourage you to grab that crash course so that you can go a little bit deeper, but I hope you got a ton of value out of this. If you did, please be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on future no-code videos just like this one, and I will see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found this to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website to see how we can help. We offer an exclusive free training that teaches the fundamentals of no-code tools, including automation. We also have some paid services available, including advanced courses, no-code hourly consulting, as well as custom project consulting. So swing on by to get the help you need, and we look forward to connecting with you soon.